and I love it. The energy here is uh, very magical. I feel like anybody you ask about this garden uh, feels that when they come here. Um, something powerful is happening here, and it's really kind of an honor to, to be a part of that. Grow Food Northampton is a homegrown, citizen-driven, nonprofit organization based in Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, we've been around for a little over three years, and we established ourselves because we saw a piece of prime farmland, one of the largest remaining tracks um, in the center of our town, um, being at risk of development. We decided to galvanize around uh, saving that land and then preserving it for community agriculture. They are Crimson Clover Farm. They have a vegetable CSA that hopefully will, um, over time, ad advance into livestock and fruits and so forth. 15 acres of vegetables, mostly for a CSA that mostly all comes to the farm. Um, and we go to two Northampton area farmers markets, the Tuesday and the Saturday market. Grow Food Northampton also helps us coordinate produce donations, so everything that is left over at the end of the week um, we donate to the Northampton Survival Center. We might not remember everybody's name all the time, but we remember everybody's faces, and it's just, uh, it's really nice to have this relationship, whether it's new people who are getting to know the farm, you know, first time members this year, or, or you know, we have lots of people who've been with us since, since our first year. Just amazing to have those continued relationships with those same people who have, again, just like stuck with us and committed to us, and you know, what we're offering is a really good fit for them and they feel like a really awesome fit for the farm. We have another set of farmers growing grain, Slow Tractor Farm. They actually run a malting business in, um, in our region. So they grow things like barley and wheat and malt them and sell them to craft breweries to make beer. We heard about the Grow Food Northampton land potentially being available and a lot of organic acreage and so we said, well, nobody's jumping up and taking this land. Why don't we try farming? We know a lot about it because we deal with farmers all the time. So let's start farming. Uh, then we have a very interesting experiment going on with micro farmers. So these are folks who are just um, operating on a very small parcel of land, in our case, one and a half acres, but growing very intensively, um, not using much in the way of heavy vehicles and being able to do a lot of hand weeding and hand watering. Um, so they're getting really good output on a very small parcel of land and then they've got a very targeted market like in our case the restaurant business. I've kind of always had this just in a, a dream of starting my own farm and Susan and I have talked about it quite a bit for, for a while and, and uh, we heard about this opportunity with Grow Food and, and just kind of jumped on it. Our two big customers are Haymarket Cafe and Cafe Evolution. I have a CSA which I do um, every other week where I have I have 25 members. I grow all different types of medicinal herbs and culinary herbs. Um, things like chamomile and calendula and tulsi. Then there's culinary herbs like parsley and sage and um, lemon balm. A lot of lemon balm. And then we have the Florence Organic Community Garden, which currently has, I'd say, about 300 gardeners in it. Uh, we have room for expansion. We have up to 400 plots, so that could be as many as 600 gardeners. And I do it not just because I like to grow food, but because it's food security. It's knowing where my food comes from and what's in it. There's people here who are literally, who are making the choice between food and medical care and now they don't have to do that. We had this amazing, wonderful first year, and then it was really this year's registration, the second one, where I was said, is, is, this gonna, is this gonna come together? Is this gonna coalesce? And sure enough, we opened the door that day and we had 100 and more plots to give away. I was up at the crack of dawn and in line hours before for the first plot uh, opening last year. We were. It was raining, there was like four or five of us, because we we had seen in the past how quick community gardens just go. I had two goals for the spring of 2012. One was to get garden space and garden. The other one was I was looking for some way to volunteer. I've always volunteered somewhere for the past 20 years or so, and was looking for some place where I could make a small contribution. 
At first it was just growing food and helping out. Uh, but when I started to get involved in the donation side of it and went to the kitchen, the soup kitchen where we donate, and met the people there who were cooking and started getting feedback, when we were told that the clients that they feed twice a week rarely see fresh vegetables. It's just not something they're exposed to, not something they have access to. So the ability to feed 50 to 70 people twice a week and to supply fresh produce for them across the board. And we donated right up into October last year. And uh, so it was that idea of these families who don't have enough to eat, who have to seek help, getting really good food. And we have the uh, cattle from uh, Mockingbird Farm. Uh, we've got three cows, two calves, another one due any day. Last year we had uh, a dozen sheep, a couple of goats, and a llama here. So it's a way of, it's a, a microcosm of what farming should be in the valley. The, the linchpin of community gardening is access to land. It just uh, frees you to make these very long-term investments, um, horticulturally, emotionally, financially for that matter, um, and to have faith that um, this is just the very, very beginning of something. Um, it's not interim, it's not temporary. Um, so our investments in soil fertility, our investments in food crops, um, those things are going to pay out for our kids and generations after that. It's very gratifying.